بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم میں اسلام علیکم پاکستان ویلکم بیک ٹو کارپوریٹ گورننس اینڈ وی آر موونگ فارورڈ ناؤ ود آر سیریز آف سیشنز ریلیٹڈ ٹو کرپشن اینڈ اٹس ڈفرنٹ ٹائپس اینڈ ٹوڈے وی گوئنگ ٹو ٹاک اباؤٹ ایکسٹارشن امبیزلمنٹ فراڈ اینڈ سم ادر ڈائمینشنس آف کرپشن لیڈیز اینڈ جرمن وین وی ٹاک اباؤٹ ایکسٹارشن دین اٹ آکرز ویئر ون پرسن میکس تھریٹس اگینسٹ این ادر پرسن آف اٹ ورس کانسیکوینسز فار فلمنٹ آف ہز اور ہر ڈیمانڈس In this case, a person making the payment may have the defense because of the threat of the physical harm or death. So what we see is, in bribery, uh, the giver and taker both mutually agree to give an amount and the, and the receiver uh, tends to take the amount and it is a, a mutually agreed transaction uh, for each other's benefit. While in extortion, what happens is, is that the receiver Uh, or the recipient of the bribe uh, is coercing or is trying to damage the other person and through sheer force is extricating uh, that money from the giver of that particular bribe. So what happens is that in extortion, uh, the giver of the bribe uh, is not responsible because he or she has been pushed or compelled to such a situation uh, that there is no way out but to do it. And a simple example could be, Uh, that uh, if I look at bribery, then if I am doing a contract and uh, I have uh, a particular payment which has to be made to me, then bribery would be that I would give the amount and the taker would be taking the amount and I would be receiving my uh, contractual uh, check. However, an extortion would be that I have completed something and I don't want to give a bribe, but the other person who is the receiver of the bribe, he or she uh, tends to put barriers for the payment of my bill and many weeks or months are passing by and naturally it is affecting and adversely affecting all of my business and therefore I would be left with no other option uh, but to uh, give a bribe to the other person uh, because uh, I know that I will not be able to receive my payment. So that is uh, extortion. The concept of extortion and facilitation payments can overlap. and the terms are sometimes used to describe the same Auckland. So some people tend to call it facilitation payment, but I would say that facilitation payment basically is a bribe. But extortion is, is when that I do not have any other option and I am compelled uh, because the other person's behavior uh, is, so, uh, is so stubborn, is so obstinate and uh, is uh, so threatening that I have no other option but to make that payment to get whatever uh, is my legal due. Uh, fraud on the other hand, Uh, can be referred to as deception. A fraud usually involves a person's deceiving another person in order to gain some financial or other advantage. Uh, it could be, for example, exaggerating a person's experience on a CV or providing false information on company statements or maybe uh, coming up with a false degree or a false uh, bank statement or uh, showing something and then uh, delivering something else. So all of these are different types of frauds which uh, take place in all the different sectors, social, Uh, private and also the public sector. We see that in fraud persons may be liable for the offense of fraud where they deliberately undertake the fraudulent action with full knowledge of the circumstances. Recklessness can also sometimes hold persons liable. So again what we see is that uh, in fraud the person who is doing the fraud is fully aware of everything but is deceiving uh, the other person and keeping the other person in the dark and therefore is not fulfilling his or her own obligation that he or she has committed to the other person and therefore there is a fraud and in that fraud naturally the person who is committing a fraud would have uh, some uh, or excessive monetary advantage in all of that. Uh, there are also cartels. Nowadays we talk about cartels. Persons may be liable for the offense of fraud where they deliberately undertake the fraudulent action with full knowledge of the circumstances. Cartels in the projects may include uh, bidding cartels, uh, loser fee cartels, price fixing and cover pricing. So uh, again cartelization uh, basically is when people get together and they tend to uh, do a particular uh, activity. Uh, nowadays, we talk about bidding cartels. Uh, so that would be uh, something like this, that uh, if uh, there, are, um, there is a bidding, uh, then all uh, the pre-approved bidders, they get together, and one person uh, is, is given the opportunity to exceed in the bill, and the others uh, would uh, basically uh, file a higher bid uh, than the selected person, and therefore, they would cartelize the whole bidding process. Uh, again, in loser's fee, what can happen is that uh, if one person is, uh, is taking the contract then, uh, or winning a contract, then 
he or she would be giving a certain amount to all of the other people who have not won the comment. And then it could be price fixing that everyone uh, gets together and in this cartelization uh, they fix a minimum price so no one else can buy below than that and that is something very common nowadays because uh, it is done in uh, so many sectors uh, of the economy uh, right now and then uh, cover pricing uh, again could be that the cover price would be very high and then based upon that uh, there would be a, a huge profit because uh, there is a cartel which has gotten together and therefore no one can compete and when there is no competition then uh, that basically tends to create exploitation and manipulation uh, within uh, that product or that service uh, or that particular industry. Um, we, we can also talk about abuse of power in uh, corruption. It occurs where a person in public office deliberately or recklessly acts in a way that is contrary to his or her duty and is a breach of his or her position of public trust. It could be including secretly owning a contractor or supplier. So uh, again, what could happen is that uh, I could have a proxy contractor or proxy supplier and I could be working through a relative of mine and uh, they would be uh, basically uh, working on my, my behalf and I would be exploiting the situation and that would be uh, abuse of power or abuse of power could also be nepotism and favoritism or appointing someone on, on non-merit uh, and that again uh, is uh, abuse of power. Uh, favoring friends or relatives for appointments, employment or contracts, victimizing or intimidating staff so that they make decisions which support the official's view. So this is done uh, a lot we can say even in Pakistan especially in the official circles where people have to do things which they do not want to do because they know that it is immoral and because of that immorality they don't want to do it but they pressurize to do it by their boss and therefore there is victimization and intimidation and if they don't do it then they are made an example. So again this abuse of power uh, has many uh, implications and many connotations and many interpretations but uh, it can be extremely lethal because uh, naturally uh, someone's benefit would be the disbenefit of so many other people and therefore it must be curbed and curtailed um, the maximum. We also talk about embezzlement. Embezzlement is the term used uh, to describe the wrongful appropriation of funds which you have duty to safeguard. For example, a public official who diverts public funds to his or private bank. Well, it happened many years ago in the old age employees benefit institution when uh, one of its chairmen uh, basically just shifted more than a billion rupees uh, into uh, his uh, private account um, outside the country and therefore that was uh, gross embezzlement. Uh, and uh, it is a type of threat which normally involves an element of fraud but should be distinguished from uh, the type of threat. So again, uh, these are different ways uh, of doing it and it could be uh, embezzlement, it could be again uh, sometimes people are just abusing their authority and uh, taking away uh, public property. So that is also uh, embezzlement. Money laundering which is uh, something uh, very important especially nowadays globally uh, we talk about FATF which is the Financial Action Task Force, you, you've heard about it and that across the world is trying to curtail money laundering because that is the very genesis of corruption and also of uh, abuse uh, of drugs and things like that and therefore this money laundering process is a, a very, very important uh, dimension of corruption. It occurs where a person moves cash obtained by criminal activity through a financial system. For an example, an organization submits a fraudulent claim to a project owner for work which the organization do not even carry and then that amount is shifted abroad. Uh, through some particular transaction and we uh, see the infamous Panama leaks, the Omni group case uh, and many more and like I mentioned to you uh, again uh, a lot of uh, drug money uh, is shifted through money laundering, uh, a lot of black money is shifted through money laundering across the world and uh, they, the FATF is trying to curtail all of that uh, through uh, anti-money laundering uh, projects and programs but uh, definitely is very difficult because uh, in, on one hand uh, technology makes it more visible but on the other technology also tends to hide it and now uh, we see that money laundering is being done uh, through cryptocurrency and so so uh, daunting and so uh, so negative that uh, through cryptocurrency uh, there is hardly any accountability and now uh, most uh, uh, black money movers and money launderers uh, and corrupt people are using cryptocurrency and that's why we see the price of cryptocurrency going up. It's all uh, a fake uh, rise which is based upon uh, money laundering and again uh, the criminal activities. Uh, behind all of that and that is extremely baneful and extremely uh, illegal. So uh, again what we see ladies and gentlemen is that there are different types of corruption, the different ways of doing corruption, uh, there are different uh, circumstances in which corruption is happening and uh, it is very important uh, that uh, the institutions and the different stakeholders they tend to curb corruption because uh, it creates unfair competition, uh, it creates the banishment of rule of law and most importantly uh, it tends to suffocate people. Therefore all corruption and all corrupt practices must be stopped 
uh, at any cost uh, on a institutional, national and global level. Thank you so much.